This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi, guys. We're on holidays at the moment. Oh, I'm loving it. Sick. And loving it. We've um, gotten a collection of some of the finest work that we've done throughout <laughs> the year. Oh, guys. And then we've padded it out with some rubbish. <laughs> Don't have to sell it, Nathan. Yeah. Don't have to sell it. <laughs> and uh, this, of course, being a live broadcast. Um, mm. uh, today's best bits are all about... From the vault 2016. Couldn't have oh, said it better yeah. myself. Oh, my God. Right to the point you are. <laughs> Enjoy. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. Okay, so we all are a little bit obsessed by all the spooky dookie mm. stuff, right? Well, well so. I'm horrified and terrified. So I, 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 my, my biggest thing is I'd love to just go to a haunted house and just be in there and suss Nathan, it out I and maybe sleep it. there. So imagine if you grew up in Australia's most haunted house. How's that for a title? I know. <laughs> uh, we've got a guy that has done exactly that. Hi, Lawrence Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, oh, Lawrence. Lawrence. Oh I thought you'd God. be like talking in tongues or something, Lawrence, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit, little bit disembodied. The voice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody knows about Australia's most haunted house. If you don't, it's the Monte Cristo homestead in Junie in, um, in New South Wales. So tell us how your family happened to start living there. Uh, it was actually purchased by my father in 1963 after buy, buying it after the last remaining Crawley son who lived at the homestead, who actually built the homestead, the Crawley family. Yep. They bought. They actually bought it as in ruins. It was virtually just a brick shell and moved in straight away, moved in with uh, three daughters. Uh, my mum was five months pregnant with the fourth daughter. <laughs> no running water, no electricity, no doors and windows. Just barely a roof on it. And for some reason, my mum didn't want to move in. She tells everyone. Oh, <laughs> wow. She's got really no high standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, lady, yeah, but, mother. <laughs> but they had no idea what they just bought and what they just walked into. And you've got to remember, all those years ago, people didn't sort of talk about the ghosty things too much. Of no, course, they have. Yeah. it was all, all kept a little bit quiet. But uh, within weeks of moving into the house, one of the very first things they experienced after sitting on the the front uh, grounds of the homestead after doing some work. Footsteps walking from one side of the balcony to the next. Yeah. Now, this is not unusual. Unusual was it was high heel um, shoes on wooden floors yeah. on a veranda that yeah. was missing large sections of the timber work. <gasps> oh, you couldn't even jump across. I love okay. it. Oh, I love it. Okay. Step, yeah. The footsteps yeah. didn't miss a beat at all on the way around. This okay, is the best no, thing. Okay, so when they came home and tell us about the light thing. <laughs> oh, that was probably within a few months of uh, being at the house again. Yeah. Now, uh, Monte Cristo used to be on the outskirts of Juni, yeah. and you could sort of see it's up on the hill, very ominous uh, place by itself. Yeah. Now, no running water, no electricity, and there'd never been electricity put onto the house. Yeah. Yeah. Candles had gone through and smashed out every pane of glass and every door and windows. There wasn't even any doors and windows left. Okay. Now, they've gone downtown to get supplies, yeah. and they're driving back up just on dusk, and as they uh, turned in the dirt road coming up leading towards the front of the house, they stopped to see lights shining out every door and window. <laughs> oh, and, Lawrence. and then they turned around and they never went back there Lawrence. ever again. So, right? so, 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 so lights spilling out, what did they think? Well, they've, they've stopped the car and both hopped out just staring at the house, knowing full well that, you know, there's no electricity at the house. But then my mum sort of thinks, well, it's squatters, people or vandals mm. that have been there the years before doing all the damage. Yeah. And uh, my dad sort of gone to hop back in the car and said, well, we've got to go up, all our stuff's there. Yeah. Yeah. She goes, well, I don't want to go up there. He goes, well, we've got to. So they hopped in the car and as they drove into the driver towards the house, every light in the house instantly switched off. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bloody ghost not paying the bills. Yeah. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I can't understand, okay, after a couple of these things happened in a row that you're telling us about and obviously a few more, why did they not just pack up and leave? Why are they still there? Why is your mum still there? Well, I think it comes down to most people have a rational mind. You'll give 20 reasons why it's not a ghost or something you can explain before you'll ever think that. And for instance, that night, people said, you know, it was the car lights reflecting off the glass and the windows, yet there was no glass in any (gasps) doors and windows. They thought it was a a haze off the mist in the the evening, sort of uh, reflecting from the town lights and things like that. So... If uh, it's like the uh, the old saying, putting your head in the sand. If you can't yeah. see, it, it can't hurt you. And if you sort of ignore it, one well, the same theory is it, it can't get you, sort of thing. And that's how my mum still lives today at the house on that whole theory. If she's not annoying them and they're not annoying her, everyone gets on just fine. Oh so my God. When, when you were growing up, right, <laughs> the town would have all been talking about the haunted house. Everyone would have known about it. Was it hard for you to have mates over? Would that would people be allowed to go to your house? Yeah, um, I, my sisters, uh, 
to have told the story about having some friends up and having a little bit of a seance, but uh, we oh. never know what actually happened that night because they've never actually spoken what happened and no one's ever tried doing another one there again. Oh. Yeah, been like the, been like the last scene in Ghostbusters where everything <laughs> just floats the <laughs> John. Now, now, now as yeah. a kid growing yeah. up, I, I, I played football. I'm a stuntman by trade now sort of thing, so I'm yeah. pretty rough and tough. And I had some rough and tough mates, but I can assure you none of them would like me to tell the story about staying at my place, you know, sort of 13, 14 years of age. And the bathroom was outside. Uh, oh. four, grow- four boys all holding hands going into the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, we won't Lawrence. make you name names, but uh, no, no, they exactly. know who they are. Uh, hey, Lawrence, you know, the title of most haunted house in Australia, does that mean the most weird things happening or are they suggesting there's more than one entity haunting it or how mm. does that work? Mm. No, a lot of people ask the question, why do we have this title? And it wasn't one sort of that we gave ourselves. It was put on uh, by by other investigators many, many years ago. But we actually have more activity per square inch in house. Okay. Hospitals and, um, you know, quarantine station and yep. things like that, they've had a lot more people pass away at it. We've only got 10 resident spirits, but ours are very only active. Only 10. Only 10. Yes. <sighs> we've, got, we've got one oh. for each day of the week, and so they can have roster days off as well. Yeah, what are their busy names? bed and breakfast. What, yeah, yeah, who are they? Yeah. What are their names? Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crawley, the original owners of the homestead, they are our prominent spirits, but yeah. Mrs. Crawley is very much in charge. She actually lived at the homestead for 22 years after her husband's death, yes. and in 22 years only left the house on three occasions. <gasps> So uh, she became a very much a recluse and went into long time mourning for her husband. Mm-hmm. But, so she's very uh, attached she, to the house too. Yes, yeah. Um, and there's a bit of a problem. Uh, she she was uh, lived there without her husband and uh, was is now more in charge than her husband ever was. But there's another old lady that wanders the halls down there, and that happens to be my mum. So there's a little <gasps> bit of clashing of heads there of um, of people thinking they're in charge of the place. Nathan, Dad, and Sean. The future is here and I'm excited and I'm on board. Now, we know that at the moment we're in the world of wearables, okay? Yeah, yeah. So yes. we've watches. got your watches. I'm wearing one right now. The Google glasses and stuff. The next thing in technology is to implant this stuff inside of us and it's happening right now. One guy that's a pioneer in this field is Amal. We've got him on the phone now. Hi, Amal. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so uh, what I can understand at the moment is there's um, a little chip that goes sort of in between your thumb and your index finger, um, and then that at the moment can be programmed to open up your house or your car or even be your work work pass. Is that right? Yeah, so depending on the technologies available, like at work or whatever, um, yeah, you can use this uh, this one chip as an identifier, just like a work badge, uh, except the difference is it's it's in your hand and it's just uh, it's always with you. You never forget it. No more keys. Imagine yeah, that. exactly. Imagine that. I mean, this is this is the opportunity. What 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 other fields? What's the future with this stuff? Where could it go? Well, one of the things that we're working on right now is actually to address the identity issue, being you know moving beyond just simple. Uh, opening doors to more uh, complex things like privacy and security applications, uh, cryptography, payments, that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, right. So, Amal, in the movies, right, we see a guy with some kind of uh, silver gun thing and he just goes, <laughs> and he pops it right into you. How does it happen in real life? <laughs> well, we, we do have an injection assembly. It's just a little uh, like little syringe and it's a, you know five, five to ten seconds and it's over and done with. How big is um, it? But... Uh, yeah, it's about two millimeters by twelve millimeters. It's a lot of people say it's a grain of rice, but it's probably the biggest grain of rice I've ever seen. Right, okay, <laughs> yeah. so it's like a risotto grain of rice. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, yeah. okay. Um, okay, so one chip. Well, how many things can you program on one tri- one chip? Can you do like your car, your house, your work? How many things? Infinite. And Infinite. It's because the. You, you don't program things on the chip. The chip has an identifier that you program the things with. Right. Oh. Yeah, like a universal remote control. Yes. You become a universal remote. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. This is exciting. Now, um, Amal, is, that, is it possible that people could track you? No. So this is where the movies yeah. lead you astray. It's yeah, okay. not, It's not a tracking device. In fact, the, the range is so extremely small, that's why it goes in the hand. So you can put your hand up to a reader. Okay. okay. So, okay, well, I'm on board right now and I want to be chipped Right now. <laughs> so you must be chipped. Are you chipped? Uh, yes, I have four devices at the moment. Oh, my God. So what do you, what, what what do, you, you, do? What do, you, what do your body do now? How exciting. <laughs> so so the, 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 the two that I have, one on each hand, those are the, our standard products. One is an XEM for low-frequency applications. One's an XNT for NFC applications. 
Um, and those do pretty much everything. They open my house, <gasps> uh, garage, <gasps> office, start my motorcycle, get into the computer, open a fire safe, and oh then I now have a smart gun, which yeah. is a, a rifle that only fires if I pick it up. Oh, really? Um, and then, yeah. And then I have two prototypes. Those are the cryptographic platforms I'm talking about. This is right. so... Like, and so the, very spinny, okay. isn't it? I'm just so excited about this because how good is that for the gun thing, right? I mean, we don't allow guns over here in Australia. But the fact is, the, the only person that can use it is the person yes. that is checked so it for would it. Stop that is, the accidental kids picking up, a toddler is, picking up a weapon and accidentally discharging. That's amazing, mate. Yeah. That's great technology. You know, I wanted to have a, a gun in my house and like you go out shooting with it and think, but I didn't want it to be able for anybody to just pick it up and fire it. So the only way I was going to have one in my house is if it was a smart gun. That's and clever. Only mm. That's clever. So, Marla, I'm guessing that uh, we're not too far away from having those chips where you just go into the local supermarket, you buy all your stuff, you just get scanned and it comes off your money in your bank? Oh, uh, it's very close. We are actually in talks with various banks um, to be able to allow our crypto platform to also run payment applications where you can just tap and pay. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. <laughs> that's, that's, that Scan is my hand. getting Beep. so bizarre. Yeah. I feel like we're yeah. not actually even paying for anything. Yeah, but then again, how many Weekend at Bernie's situations do you yes. see when someone's died <laughs> and then you just want to use the rest of their bank account so you just strap them onto yourself and take them into Coles? <laughs> or just cut the hand off. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if we were to get chipped right now, which is right at the start of this technology, right? So this is right at the mm-hmm. dawn of it. Yep. How much would it cost us to get chipped? Well, our most common, uh, most popular one is $100. And uh, you just get a dangerous Things.com. What? Okay. Things.com. And that's bucks. it. Because normally when it's a new technology, it's like $10,000 and then in three years' time, it's twenty. dollars <laughs> um, So that seems like a bit of a bargain. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty decent. I mean, we, we try to price it so it's affordable for people and it's still enough revenue that we can develop new, new exciting technologies. Okay, is, to- is there a, um, a top-level uh, package that you could buy? <laughs> That's the one that we suggest uh, for, for people who want to experiment with NFC. So uh, we also have a lower cost XCM, which is for low frequency applications. It's yeah. like $60. Oh, my God. So, so what if would I, that work for? So the lower frequency stuff is just an identifier, uh, like I was saying. So it's common use is locks and doors. Right. The NFC, the, uh, that one actually works with all the locks and doors, but also you can store data on it. Like I have my business card on there. So if you use an <laughs> NFC phone, like a smartphone, yeah. you can scan it and get my yep. business card, that kind of thing. <laughs> oh. Open your no, yeah, is there something what you can do when you give someone a high five? Like yeah. maybe you could <laughs> you can that's how you transfer funds. Yes. If I've got to give money to give to you, I go eighty dollars short, high five. Done. <laughs> yeah. Does it have to be in your hand? Like could you put it in your face so you could just have to lean your face up against things to open them? Some people have talked about putting it in their butt so they could put their butt up to the door, but uh, I think hand is probably the best, uh, you know, the sure. best use of the technology. Okay. Yeah, you don't so, want to be at the shopping centre wiping your butt across the... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do, though. <laughs> so, wait there. So, say if I want to get this done right. So, say you're building a place and you're, you're going to have to get your... Are you going to have to research and look for a certain type of door lock that will be programmable or will they be programmable with anything that's sort of computer-based? Well, if you don't have any electronics hacking skill, then you'll want to buy a lock that has it built in. Yep. And we do have a list of products that are compatible. So, um, like, for example, Samsung makes a, a door lock that you can just buy, put in your door, and it'll work right out of the box. I'm doing this. That's I'm amazing. doing this. <laughs> Amal, I'm doing it. <laughs> Amal, is there any restrictions um, due to law? No. So, we, we'd actually explored F- getting FDA approval. Yep. Um, and we could have gotten... Uh, uh, approval. However, that would have caused a problem because these are not medical devices. They're in the same range as like body jewelry or piercing, mm-hmm. ear piercing jewelry. Yep. Yeah, right. So um, we, we, we do partner with professional body piercers to do the installations. And so if we had gotten medical device approval, it would have restricted uh, those partners from actually installing these chips. Okay. okay. So, so once it's in, can you feel it now? Do you notice it? Yeah. I, you know, you don't feel it at all. After a couple of weeks, um, you just kind of forget about it. You just use it. And mm. it doesn't hurt? No, not. I mean, it's a little pinch when you get it put in, like an ear piercing would yep, be, but yep. uh, but it's not not bad. No. Okay. And is there any risk to it? I guess. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. In fact, there's less risk than uh, there's less risk than getting an ear piercing because when you get a piercing, right, you get this big hunk of metal sticking through a couple holes in your body for yeah. weeks on end. But yeah. uh, you know, this is this is healed up and sealed over in a matter of hours. You get a little scab, maybe tiny, tiny little scar. 
and you know, risk of infection is gone at that point. Yeah. So yeah, it's much, only, much less risk. The only scary thing is if sudden, you know how sometimes things travel through your body, so yeah. you get it in your thing, and then suddenly yeah. it ends up in your nipple, and you have to scan, <laughs> scan with your boob, Natalie, when you're yeah. paying for bread. Yeah, um, that could happen. Yeah, so, okay. so that's a that's a my, that's called migration, and yes. it's uh, it's not it's really not an issue. But I've had the same uh, tag in my left hand for eleven years, and it hasn't moved an inch. Years, you've had years. this for eleven years. Yeah, eleven years. Yeah. Okay, well, come on. I mean, we're only getting it now. <laughs> what time are you getting it to yourself, better, Mark? You're getting the best one. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I feel like you've just been holding out on yeah. us, for 11 years. Selfish little robot hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think we're all on board. We're yeah. on board. Send us three, it, thanks. It, it, <laughs> it will be... I mean, what? how far before everybody's got this? Do you think 20 years? Yeah, because right now it's a, it's a fad. It's a gimmick. It's like, oh, my God, I don't think I could do it. When's it normal? When's it normal? I think when the applications are ubiquitous. So, for example, tap and pay is everywhere, and once yeah. we get that application, it will be a lot more appealing to more people. Oh, yeah. you have sold us. This is <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you were the leader of a cult, I would have given you all my money so far. Omar, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for talking to us. It's, it's opened our eyes. It well, has. truly, the possibilities are endless, clearly. And, um, hey, bloody well done. So what's the website if people want to check it out, mate? It's dangerousthings.com. Dangerousthings.com. It sounds more dangerous than what it is. <laughs> You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Natalie's uh, back in Esperance doing her 50th uh, anniversary at her school. Oh, school, yeah, yeah. But I'm glad we've got you here this morning, Ellie, because you are on Tinder, right? Yes, reluctantly, yes, yes. Are reluctantly. Enjoy- are you enjoying it? Do you know what? With Tinder, it's a love-hate relationship. You love it and you're swiping and you're having a great time and then all of a sudden you're like, I just, just got to get off here. You see, the only, you time I, the only time I'm on Tinder because I'm not on it is when I'm hanging around with a group of people at a pub. I remember that night yes. we're out for dinner yeah. um, and like that's heaps of fun for me because I think it's great to swipe people yeah. as a group. Um, <laughs> now, news.com.au, um, there's this awesome article at the moment by a guy who does some great stuff. His name's Matt Dunn. We've got him on the phone right now. Hey, Matt. Hey, how you going, guys? Yeah, hey, Maddie. Firstly, Maddie, love all the stuff that you do. You're hilarious. <laughs> um, you. But your five t- Tinder tips to mac- maximise your online dating from an eligible bachelor, I mean, I think that rung true because I read one of your tips, mate, and I was like, "That's I'm not even on it, and this gives me the shit. <laughs> and that is tip number two. Do you tell people about tip number two? Oh, the group photos. Yes. yes. So, yeah, on Tinder it's sort of all superficial and you judge it by how people look. And uh, there's chicks that uh, just they'll have, or and guys as well will have uh, group photos where you you have no idea who it is. There's like four people in every photo, and you're scrolling through them all trying to figure out who it is. Yep, it's and, so hard. And you yeah, know why? Yeah, I usually assume the ugliest person. Yeah, well. oh, of course exactly it is. They're right. trying to hide themselves amongst the posse. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <'Cause> you're <laughs> ugly. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think, you, Matt? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it, it is true. It's never the person that you want. Every time I do it, I think, oh, it's this one here. It's that, it's that brunette at the back to the left. No, I get it. It's, it's never the brunette that's the left. Aww. Maddie, we've discussed this a few times where people putting their photos up online and they're putting the super you, you know, the super person. Oh. You're going, you don't look like that in a million years. This is my rule, yeah. Matt. What I think it should be is you should have a photo of you on your best day, a photo of you on your worst day, and a photo of you in between. So people can see the range of what they're going to get, don't you reckon? I actually think that's a good idea. Thank you, because there's nothing worse than seeing the disappointment in someone's eyes <laughs> over the way your face is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that disappointment in people's eyes. Oh. So, Maddie, what do you reckon the keys are to setting up your a profile properly? I just think a good bio. You got to have a good bio. You know, it's, it's they give you enough room now. You got more than more than. Uh, 100 characters or you've got a few hundred so you can put a bit of effort in there yeah. and just um, yeah put put some put put three photos up like you said I reckon I should have added that I've, I've made a mistake there yeah, 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 I think you should. Yeah, yeah, you know, three photos and make sure none of them are a glamour one and too. And just embrace online dating, just I think, as well. Like, we do everything online as it is. And yeah. people that think it's weird, it's, it's 2016 now, so, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, you're not, yeah, ashamed of, you, time. you're not ashamed of your online banking. Don't worry about your shame <laughs> of your online <laughs> something. That's it. Yeah. Well, Maddie, um, Ali, it's, we talked about it before, she's on Tinder. If she tells you a bit about her profile, will you be able to judge it and tell us uh, if she's going right or wrong? Oh, of course. Okay. Well, you got you give tips for guys. Do you, do you know anything about tips for girls? Well, actually, there was a lot of girls that, that commented after and they said, you know, we have a completely different experience to what you have. So It's so true. I wanted to ask you, describe the difference between, you know, females and males using Tinder because, 
Like I assume for men it's a numbers game. Yes, 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 yes. See what comes back and see which you like. Whereas girls were like, mm, no, he's got a fish in that one. No, he's a bit short. Oh, no, he's, he's, he's a bit got young. A fish in that one. You know, we're very like critical and we analyse. And, oh, and girls are so savage. I've seen the news <laughs> seen them before, and I've never seen more no's in my life. It's just it's, it's just heartening. I look yeah. and all my chick friends that use it, and I'm like, I'm surprised I even get a match with how many no's chicks do. <laughs> It's true. No, nah, it's true. pretty harsh. But just yeah, the guys, like, I've done it. We just sit there and power swipe. So you just like until you run out of likes. And then when you get a match, you hope for the best. Yeah. Now, you, you think, do you think it's sad? Am I right to say that you think it's sad to buy an actual full membership to Tinder? Is that what I was getting yeah. from your article? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's, it's probably not the worst thing in the world. But I don't know. It's something, something about paying $30 a month for more likes. It, yeah, it seems a little bit. Uh, troubling. So how do that you get troubling. how do you get the most out of your free account then? Well, you just it's on a twelve hour cycle, so you swipe through in the morning, <laughs> just clear it out before work. Yeah, and then you know you go go put in a hard day at the office, get home, and you got another another set of likes. To you. Brilliant! <laughs> swipe your guts out. So so um. Let's hear some of your profile well, and let's see if Matt's got anything right, to Well, I haven't got anything written on mine. Like, I'm quite witty and I'm very funny and clearly <laughs> very modest. Um, but I haven't got anything written because I think, you know, we get chatting and uh, then they can find that out. Should I have something like a, a quirky line or anything about myself written? What should I have? Yeah, definitely. Definitely sell yourself just what you sold me then. I'd say that in there, that I'm funny and humble <laughs> and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe say that. I wasn't going to put a profile down. And what about my, because my photos? What, what, what kind of, uh, obviously, no group Just use some of mine. <laughs> <laughs> what, just say, Sean? <laughs> put Shawnee Mac in my Tinder profile. <laughs> Yeah, what should she do for a photo? So she's because ah, like she was going yeah, down well, to the fish shop to buy fish. You can have group photos if you look nice in a group photo. Have it, but just don't have it as your first photo because right. most people, most guys, we're not going to look past the first one. Nah, so, you know, <laughs> we don't have time. Is that right? Today. You don't look past the first one. Oh, uh, maybe yeah, a little bit. Well, because you're flicking pretty fast, you want, you need That's to be true. caught by one photo, don't you? I, I, but what I if it's just one really good photo? Down really fast. Yeah, have you? really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's like. Finger guns. Um, okay, well, <laughs> Ali Chaney, she's panelling our show right now, and Ali's like right up in Twitter's grill. Um, Ali, let's go through your I profile. Hate you for making me do this <laughs> on radio so the whole of Perth can hear. Okay, go you on. want me to read you my yeah, bio? Yeah, yes, cool. please. Oh, guys, yeah. like, right. I, Listen in, Maddie. Here's me thinking I'm hilarious, and now I'm going to be so embarrassed. Okay. <laughs> Oh, God. In my eyes, I'm straight up gangster. Oh. <laughs> this oh heart yeah. In the rest, in the eyes of the rest of the world, I'm probably more of a Phoebe from Friends, less likely to go busting caps, and more likely to spend my days frolicking with my dog at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> frolicking. That's really good. <laughs> okay, Matt. Like Matt, analyse. Ah, uh, flawless. Oh, hey, oh, hey, Matt, do you want to go out sometime? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I, uh, I actually seen Matt. I think you and Matt will go quite yeah. well together. Matt, are you dating anyone right now? No, no, I'm not. Ali's gorgeous. She's blonde, blue eyed. Her dad's well, a judge. Know, let's make it happen. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> right. Swipe me right, Matt. Uh, okay. Swipe me. Super like. Super like. right. Well, Matt, it's fantastic. Everyone can check out Matt's work on news.com.au. Matt, you're an absolute legend, buddy. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks, guys. Good on you, Matty. Thanks, buddy. Nathan, Matt and Sean in podcast form. Now, we are discussing Tinder profiles and uh, the tips that maybe make yours work a bit better. We just spoke to Matt Dunn. Absolutely hilarious. You can read his article on news.com.au. Right now, we've got Leah in Hocking. And Leah, you've got a bio that we can have a listen to? I do, yeah. Okay, Leah. Well, you sound lovely. All right. (laughs) Thanks, so, So let's pretend that we're looking at Tinder right now. What are we reading? All right, so my bio is Wish You a Beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it lures in lots of boys. Yeah, for Wish sure. You a Beer. That's yep. cute. That's per- cute. Perfect for something like that. Yep. Um, but then they message me asking me, like, what kind of beer I drink, and I hate beer. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really go much further than that. So you don't make something up, Leah, just to keep the convo going? <laughs> no. Well, you don't want to start life with a lie, do you, Leah? I don't. That's exactly right. Because then at her wedding, she's going to be rolling in kegs and she hates the crap. (laughs) Leah, why don't you try uh, come wine with me or something like that? What what, What do you drink? Um... 
What about oh. what about then I swoon for goon? <laughs> yes, that is good. I might, I might put that one. Or how about I'm Randy for Shandy? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are throwing all kinds of I know. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to have you hooked up. You have lines everywhere. By the end of the day, you're hilarious. Thanks, Liv. Ali, will you be turned off of a hot guy holding a fish? So let's talk about the fish thing because so many guys go get a big fish, they want to take a photo and they want women to date them for it. There's nothing wrong with a big fish. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) sorry. (laughs) But, I mean, it just depends the rest of the profile. If if it's a hottie, I'll I'll swipe right. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're talking Tinder. Yeah, we are. Um, William's tweeted us. um, Absolutely hilarious. So it's William, 29 years old. Okay. Okay. This is what he's got on his foodie photographer bucket lister. And then he's got quotes. An outstanding gentleman, the West Australian. Top lad, New York Post. My favourite, mum. <laughs> swipe right, swipe right, Miss Universe Australia. I wish I was more like him, Justin Timberlake. My hero, Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> Would you swipe on that, Ellie? No, because you know what? So many guys I love have that. I love that. She goes, no. So many guys <gasps> have that. Do they? Yeah, I'm not joking. Is that, is that Sorry, not original? William, but okay, well, what about this then? What about this then? I'm, I'm on Tinder right now. Andrew, 29. He's eight kilometres away. And he just has two words to say. You ready? What is Private it? yacht. Oh, swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, that's it. Close the deal. Delete Tinder. Let's go. Oh, we are talking about Tinder profiles. Um, Ashley's in Beldivis. Hi, Ash. Hi, how are you going? Yeah, good, yeah. Ash. Ash. Now, your friends are on Tinder? Um, yeah, a long time ago. Well, not that long. Yeah. But um, me and my mates at work used to have a WhatsApp group chat, and we were all single at the same time, and we used to call it Tinder Hall of Shame. Yes. <laughs> So every time we saw, like, a dodgy Tinder profile, we'd post it to each other and, like, sit in the office, have a good laugh about it. But there's so many guys that had um, their profile picture as their wedding photo. Oh, oh my God. God. Are you serious? No. we like, screenshot it and send it to each other. Like, are you for real? Like, why would I swipe right for you? Like, you're married. Are you and, like, kidding? And, like, the amount of guys with cats. A lot of guys are cats as well. A lot of guys wow, are... Okay, so, let, so let's talk about the marriage thing, right? So you're obviously assuming that he's not with her anymore and he was married. So therefore, it shows that he can commit. Is that at least slightly no. attractive? <laughs> he's mental. <laughs> no? no, I saw it as like them trying to say that they're in an open relationship, maybe. So oh, oh, sister wives. Okay. Um, <laughs> then what about... Uh, so what was the other one that you said you saw? Guys with, guys with cats. Guys with cats. cats. As their profile picture, yeah. Is What's it, wrong is with it, cats? Is a guy with a cat a turn off? Oh, uh, yeah, for me. Like, a guy with a dog is completely fine, but a guy <laughs> holding a cat is a different story. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah, I do too. Think, I think if a guy's really into his cat, he's probably a psychopath. I've said <laughs> yeah. it a thousand times. Totally great. Totally, totally like great. In the background you just know he's like petting his cat, planning to murder you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you just sort of know that's what's happening. I'm not dog to evil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. thanks, Ash. That's hilarious. <laughs> Nathan I just swiped, swiped, I just swiped someone. that way, Ellie. Was that right to swipe yes for someone on you? I swiped yes. left. I swiped that way. Do I just swipe yes for someone on Possibly. you? I'm on your... Was it a match? I told you not to swipe on anyone, Nathan. Yeah, I just swiped on someone for you. Have we got a match? Have we got a match? Is he hot? Oh, he's like? rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, rubbish. did I just swipe again? Stop <laughs> swiping! I'm sorry, sorry. Matt I'm, swiping. I'm matching. There's a guy with a dog. <laughs> And he says nothing. Oh, wait, they're searching for a future ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> Put the yeah, phone down, Nathan. Put the phone great down. Fun. Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.